This is a video about peripherals I use, namely the keyboard, mouse, and headphones as a software engineer on a daily basis. These vary a bit if I'm working from home, at my dedicated workspace desk, or if I'm on the go. But without further ado, here's what I use and my thoughts about them. When I'm at my permanent standing desk, you may have seen a previous configuration of that in my desk setup video, I use this Helix keyboard and this Logitech MX Ergo Plus which is a lot of words to describe a split keyboard and a thumb trackball mouse. First, let's go over the Helix keyboard. As you can see, it's a split keyboard that's joined together with a TRRS cable. The keys are laid out in an ortholinear fashion, which is just a fancy way to describe the grid layout of the keys rather than the stagger you see on traditional keyboards. The whole focus of this desk and peripheral setup slash combo is to try to be as ergonomic as possible. The split halves of the keyboard are great for having your hands closer to shoulder width apart, if your adjoining TRS cable allows, or really whatever is more comfortable for you at the time. It's great for adjusting the width or spacing of your keyboard, so you're not always in one position throughout the day. The downside is it's not nearly as portable since you have more keyboard parts and wires to move around. But with my setup and where I use it, it's not intended to be. This Helix keyboard has a PCB that's hot swappable compatible, so you can change switches in and out with ease. How about this used and pre-assembled but with no key capture switches on the mech market subreddit, so I don't entirely remember all the specs. I've got a mix of Duroc L4 clear purple 67 gram switches and some Gateron silent yellows in some random places where the Duroc started chattering. The Helix has an extra column on both sides under the PCB. I still haven't grown used to using this as I previously come from a LED split and I'm not used to the extra column and frequently get it mixed up with the spacebar and delete which I have mapped out just a column over. The keycap set is Mateo's MT3 Profile Dev TTY Ortholinear keycap set which you can get from Drop or Amazon or maybe a couple of other places as well now. It may have been a drop, formerly known as Mass Drop exclusive before and no longer is now, but I'm not entirely sure, it's been a while. They're MT3 profile, so they're sculpted and tall, similar to SA, but a bit more pronounced, I believe. I've never had the experience of using a keyboard with SA keycaps and all the profiles. My previous let split had all row three SA ice caps, but that's not sculpted at all. It's my first experience with MT3 and I do enjoy it. I usually like blank keycaps for the look and the crypticness about it, but I do enjoy these. Blank keycaps were helpful when I was trying out different layouts like Dvorak or Coleman, but I guess my tastes are just evolving. Also, keycaps can get expensive and this set isn't very cheap either, so not too much to say. They're PVT, so they're supposed to be more shine resistant than an ABS variant, and at least in the MT3 profile, I read they sound a bit deeper. I enjoy them for the geekiness behind the name and it just seems fitting for this keyboard. I've also rigged the keyboard so that it has some makeshift tenting, again for ergonomics. You can see I started off with some tall rubber stands. I think these are usually for furniture or smaller things like a drawer or shelf, but I just repurposed it to angle the inner part of the keyboard. And when that angle wasn't enough, I sought out this mini laptop stand that gives it a decent angle also purchasable on Amazon. Layout wise, this keyboard works with VIA, so you can modify the layout in a nice GUI. But I believe due to that, it does limit you to some more simple bindings or mappings that you might otherwise be able to program with QMK. Just briefly, I have space on my left thumb and backspace on my right thumb. I have some keys dedicated to opening developer tools in the browser or taking a screenshot or screen recording quickly. All just small things that I use pretty regularly and have come in handy. This isn't a video about keyboard layouts, so I won't go too deeply into this, but you can have a lot of fun finding the right layout and key bindings that help speed up your workflow. That's one thing I love about keyboards that support QMK or VIA firmware for layouts. Lastly, I've got a magnetic adapter for the USB-C port. Not for the portability or anything, but because I'm trying to preserve this USB port. This is one of my favorite keyboards and I just want it to last. My previous daily driver was a LET split, which is essentially the same keyboard, split, ortholinear keyboard, but with one less row, that I put together myself, solder and everything, but one of the micro USB ports broke off the microcontroller, and I unfortunately did not want to go through the hassle of desoldering the microcontroller with all those pins. Just some quick pros and cons and recap of the keyboard. VIA is a nice firmware editor with a GUI that makes it seamless. No hardware reset button or having to put the keyboard in flash mode, but it has its limitations for how crazy you can get. Having that additional layer of modularity with the layout of your keyboard is really valuable as well in my opinion. There's definitely a learning curve at first and some tinkering required, but I think it's worth it. Hot swappable switches I feel like are a must with any new keyboard. It gives you the freedom to use any compatible switches to achieve different sounds and feels as well as increase the longevity of your keyboard. Once you find a winning combo, it's reassuring to know you can replace the switch quite easily if it starts chattering or you have have an itch for another switch. 
This feature alone has saved this keyboard for me as I can swap out any switches that start chattering. I haven't narrowed down whether it's the switch or soldering of the hot swappable socket that's ultimately causing the chattering. The one con of this keyboard, for me at least, is that the microcontroller isn't hot swappable as well. And that's only because I've already been burned with the LED split. It would also be nice if it had a rotary knob just to see what additional workflows or layouts that might unlock for me. I'm sure I could spend an hour or two playing with different functionality for a rotary and QMK under different layers and whatnot. And it would be great if this keyboard had a built-in trackball, but these are all wishes rather than knocks against the keyboard. It gets the job done as a split, ortholinear, tentable keyboard. With that said, keyboards that I'm eyeing for future use are Iris. I think this supports a rotary knob and has a hot swappable microcontroller. Also the Lily 58, I think this supports a rotary knob and has, I'm confusing one, either both or don't, but they're both split uh, ortholinear keyboards with a thumb cluster. And there is the Chari, Charibidus, Charibidus, I don't know how to pronounce that at all, but this supports an integrated trackball and the thumb cluster, which seems like endgame. I need to get around printing the frame on my 3D printer and see if I can put one together with an electronic kit available online. At one point, my dream keyboard was a wireless let's split and an aluminum case with topper switches and maybe some blank keycaps but sculpted like an MT3 profile. I don't think such a thing exists as Topre switches aren't friendly to custom mechanical keyboards and different layouts, but we'll see. Okay, that was a lot. I like keyboards, I think they're fascinating, and I'm a huge advocate of investing into things you touch and use every day, like your bed, the shift knob in your car, the peripherals you use for work or gaming, etc. Onto the mouse. I used to use an MX Master 2 before my wife took it but in line with my attempt at trying to be as ergonomic as possible, I've landed on the Logitech MX Ergo Plus. I'm not as diehard about mice, so I don't think I'll have too much to say. It definitely doesn't track as well as the gaming mouse, like say the G703, but I do experience a lot less wrist pain when using this. I pretty much keep it permanently tented and try to clean the trackball and rollers monthly. I wish it had the dual scroll wheel modes that MX Master and some other Logitech mice do, and I also wish it had a roller near your thumb for side scrolling like the MX Master series. For what it is though, it gets the job done. It takes some time adjusting to using your thumb to navigate around instead of moving your entire arm around, but once you're used to it, it's a pretty enjoyable experience in my opinion. If Logitech ever makes a mouse that combines this thumb trackball experience with more of the functionality of the MX Master series, I think that would be a great productivity mouse. One custom mouse I have been eyeing is the Ploopy Classic Trackball. I like that you can buy a kit put it together and program it with the QMK firmware. It just unlocks another level of tinkering on top of the ergonomics it provides as a trackball mouse. I'll keep you posted if I ever buy that and assemble one. Enough about that, here are the headphones I like to use. These are the SteelSeries Arctis Pro Wireless. They're admittedly pretty pricey at around 300 or so, but I'm a big fan of the rechargeable and removable battery setup. Also, that it comes with two so that you can always have one charged and ready to go. And again, because they're removable, if or when the batteries have degraded, you should be able to pretty easily just buy a new battery and pop it right in. I'm not an audiophile or anything, I'm probably half deaf in my right ear, so I won't even try to talk about the sound characteristics, which since it's wireless probably isn't that great. But my favorite feature about these headphones by far is that they support two audio channels at a time. So I can connect them to my phone via Bluetooth and have my podcast playing there then connect it via the dock with USB to my laptop or desktop and hear the audio from there. They also come with a retractable microphone that I sometimes use, great for continuing video chats even when you're not at your desk. And again, with the dual audio channels slash connectivity, if I ever get a call on my phone, I can answer and use these headphones as a speaker or microphone for my phone call. It's a very seamless transition and great user experience in my opinion. With that, 90% of the audio I'm listening to is human voices, whether it's sped up podcasts that I have playing in the background while I work, or the voices of my coworkers during our video chats. And it's 100% effective for that purpose. I do not use them for video editing, and honestly have no idea if they'd be viable for that. But they are great for gaming. I haven't noticed any latency issues. The one negative I guess I could say about these is if you wear them long enough, you can get fatigued. I usually wear them throughout the day for work, but I will say they make my ears hot in the summer, and after six hours or longer, the clamping force in your head might start to be uncomfortable. They also do lean on the heavier side, so I'm sure that contributes to the discomfort that you sometimes feel. Other than that, they're pretty great. They're just pricey. I was going to get into the peripherals I use while on the go, but I'll save that for the next video. Thanks for watching as always.